What if everyone was invisible? So what I did was I looked at dating. So I started out by looking at the dating apps because dating apps rely heavily on pictures, like just photos and you swipe left or right. I think they took a survey of people. And people just admitted, yeah, they just based on the photos. They don't read any of the profile or anything. But And, and Tinder actually has a, a feature called Smart Photo that like it – tries to figure out which photos are like more successful and then it like reorders your photos and puts the better photos first. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So there's like a whole like ecosystem around that. <laughs> it's like the photo where I'm with my brother gets really a whole lot more hits for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's not going to happen anymore because there are no like dating apps aren't going to have photos anymore because it's just going to be a picture of nothing. Um, so instead, people are going to be forced to read profiles It'll probably make the whole dating scene better in the long run (laughs) because people will actually like get to know each other. But then once you're actually on the date, I want to see like what are different ways to attract your date if they can't see you. So the first thing that came to mind was (laughs) what? I said magnets. Oh. (laughs) They're magnetic. Hate you. You get a big magnet. Well, you have to give them a magnet and then you can attract them. It doesn't work if they don't have a magnet. Yeah, you need a chick magnet and a dick magnet, and you just have to match them up. And that's my answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Welcome to my TED Talk. There. <laughs> um, so the first thing that I thought of was makeup. So that seemed like the obvious way to go. But I feel like in this world where everyone's invisible, makeup actually wouldn't be that attractive because, no. like, we don't have we don't really have concepts of faces. So, like. Trying to to mimic a face isn't going to really work, and it's just going to be so. You're either going to have like a little makeup on your face; it's just going to be like splotches of makeup floating in midair, or you're going to have a lot of makeup, and it's just going to be like a like a clown. You, yeah, you are a clown, exactly. That's what I was going to say. You can do refine. You can do like that the the um, Asian makeup, where it's like the the you know the white face with all the with the red and the fancy bits. Still gonna look weird though, and I don't really see the benefit in mimicking that if, like, if we don't, we're not used to faces, right? So instead of that, I was like, okay, we're not gonna use makeup. What else can we see? We can see clothes. So, like in my version, the clothes are not invisible. You can see the clothes. So this is a weird situation where wearing clothes is sexier than not wearing clothes. <laughs> 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 so. I think people will just wear like tight fitting clothes to show off their body if they have a good looking body. <laughs> or loose fitting clothes to be like, hey, hey yeah. I like, <laughs> you know, video games. <laughs> Date me. Right. Um, and then the color of the clothes is actually going to matter a lot because different colors say different things. Um, it's like a whole field called chromotherapy. And there are specific colors that invoke like sexy thoughts. <laughs> so red i got this off of like a list it was like an article and they like listed different like attributes for these colors so red had passion energy excitement and sex (laughs) sex sex was one of them they just got bored of beating around the bush at the end (laughs) black had seduction elegance mystery and sex (laughs) and copper slash bronze had love passion friendship and sex (laughs) I'm noticing a trend. <laughs> yeah. So those are those are the three main ones that uh for sex. <laughs> and uh the problem with this is that color or chromotherapy is like sorta of ambiguous because some colors have different meanings in like different cultures, stuff like that. So like And it's maybe kind of sorta of pseudoscience. Yeah, it's sort of a pseudoscience. <laughs> I mean some places like black can mean death. And like red can mean war, so you might want to say that you you want to have sex, but maybe you're going to war. <laughs> yeah, red can re- represent things like passion and war and sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so it's like okay, that's not that's no good. So what's another way to attract someone else? And I looked at the voice, your voice, like the tone of your voice. So there have been studies and. General idea was that higher voices are more attractive in females and lower voices are more attractive in males because higher voices are like it's associated with high estrogen and low voices with uh, 
high testosterone. So that was one theory, but then there was this weird thing called phonetic convergence, where you basically, like, if you're attracted to someone, then you try to talk similar to the way they talk. Hmm. So, like, you try to mimic them. I think it, it's supposed to, like, make them feel more comfortable around you or something huh. like that. So that kind of contradicts the high high voice, low voice thing. So that was kind of a little confusing. So what, basically the, the dating strategy is just repeat everything she says back to you, but in a low, sexy voice. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so what are your interests? <laughs> <laughs> so color and voice were both kind of ambiguous i didn't really like looking at them so i moved on to smell <laughs> and now it's what i'm into <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what i'm into <laughs> smell is actually it, it plays sort of a decent role in t- attraction because smell is associated with like your health so certain diseases actually have like a scent to them Oh. So as an example, like if diabetes is known for giving off like a scent of rotten, t- rotten apples. So like if you smell good, then it's like a sign that you're healthy. You know, plus I read I was reading strawberries like their scent could be, you know, a, a equivalent to passion and war and sex and sex. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to look at what smells are attractive. And I, I, lo- I found a bunch of different lists. And there are different things based on whether you're a guy or whether you're a girl who you're trying to attract. But the one that overlapped with both of them was vanilla. Oh, vanilla smells vanilla so Vanilla is excellent. Good, vanilla smells very good. So I think this is like the one scent that everyone is going to use just because it's like universal. Everyone likes vanilla. The problem is that there is a really big high demand for vanilla, even right now, without this invisible world. So vanilla... The demand for vanilla annually is 12,000 tons, and we only produce 1,800 tons per of, of natural vanilla per year. So it's like nowhere close. So the rest is chemically synthesized. It's like artificial. It's made from petrochemicals, and it's specifically made from a chemical called guaiacol. And guaiacol is found in the guts of locusts. Oh, no. (laughs) And it's actually a pheromone that attracts locusts. So... (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. So what we're going to end up with is just where people are, since they're all wearing this uh, guayacol, locusts are just going to swarm over us. And locusts are actually known for, like, destroying crops and, like, causing famine. (laughs) So I think we're just all going to starve to death. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, things about me. I wear red. I speak in a low voice. I smell like vanilla. Other interests. Being covered in locusts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was... Oh, the, man. It, I, I started looking at dating. I didn't really expect it to turn into famine. But that's kind of the way it went. And hey, it happens. Dating yeah. pool's rough these days. 